Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel has problems. And we are going to be comparing these problems to, well, Magic the Gathering Arena, because that's what I specialize into. Okay, so we got to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Mm -hmm. This game is the talk of the town right now, both in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community and also even some of Konami's shareholders, you guys might remember. And I wanted to share my opinions on it as well as get you guys' opinions on it. So let's just start with sort of my background around this game, kind of how I okay. play it and how I approach it. I am a bit of a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel fiend. I nice. would almost say an addict. I really like this game. I play it basically every day. I'm always grinding through the ladder. Like I'm usually in diamond rank playing against, right now it's like Tyr and Branded and Labyrinth decks all day. Okay, I'm gonna do a hot take. The PC versions of, of card games that are online, easy to accessible, fast, you can just log in any moment that you feel like and just play a couple of games are better than the actual cards that you can, you know, play with people in real life. There is obviously a difference, but this is most likely 100% the future, because there's no battle pass in real life that you can play. Now, I'm not saying that they should get rid of, you know, the actual collectible trading card game that you can play with your friends in person. No. But... They, I, I think every company will sooner or later just slowly concentrate more on, uh, more and more and more on the PC versions of these games. Because that is simply, you know, what's going to make them the most money in reality. Long. Currently, I've been enjoying the Dogmatica Ritual deck a lot. But I also have different things like Exosisters, Generators, Medulce. I just, I play a bit of a mix. I enjoy kind of cool. you know, trying to bash my head in against the current metagame and see how well I can do. And I also just like Master Duel as a game presentationally. I like the music. I like the sound effects. Oh, it's I like so the good. For when, you know, boss monsters appear on screen. On that. the whole, Konami did a great thing with Master Duel. It is fun. It's convenient. I can just hop in. Play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Unlike Magic the Gathering, where the animations are trash and feel sad. Well, at least most of them. There are some decent ones. Most of them are trash, sad, and feels bad. And the board is bugged, you know? You, you can clearly see that there was literally no absolute shred of love put into making that thing. And enjoy it, and that's great. That's not to say that I don't have complaints about the game too, but I wanted to just get that out of the way early on so people know. And there are even some complaints that people have about this game that I disagree with and think are perfectly fine. Let's start with hmm. some of the elephants in the room, right? The first is that whole best of three and side decking thing that a lot of people want in Master Duel. Coming from the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, of course, where we have, you know, best two out of three matches and the ability to side deck to kind of help circumvent difficult matchups or situations. I think that these would be really nice things to add into Master Duel, True. even if they weren't necessarily part of the core experience. I still would like the ability to play like maybe best two out of three in duel rooms or something like that. Not bad. But I feel that for Master Duel, they don't really fit in with what I imagine was probably the vision for this game as like a digital game. I think they want people to be able to log in, get in a few quick Yu-Gi-Oh matches and log out. If you Very, very absolutely 10 out of 10 point. Uh, they already probably know, uh, they, they, you know, every company is checking out their major competition, which game is doing what, and it has been already proven by, you know, Magic the Gathering Arena and, well, everything, honestly, before that, that best out of three is a nice thing to have, but no one really plays it. Everyone will just prefer the best of one because it's faster, the stakes are lower, you get in, you get out, there is, you know... It, it, it's just better. It is just a better experience. Best of one is gonna be king. You can add best of three, but then you need to be careful of the magic situation where there's like 15 different formats, and some of those formats are literally dead. People come into them, try to play that format, and it's like, oh, well, can't find players, you know? Uh, the word around the town is that there are literal, by the way, bots filling up these slots so people even have to uh, have people to play against in uh, certain formats because just not enough people literally play uh, play them. And that, I think, is most likely 100% true. So you don't want to oversaturate your game in general with a bunch of formats. Yeah, there are people who want best of three, and there's nothing wrong with that. But from, you know, a game perspective... Do you want to add a best of three that, you know, splits the player base and, you know, like, you know, one in ten people even remotely care about it? Probably, honestly, not. But it's a good thing to add, technically. 
you play best two out of three with side decking, the average length of a match increases from what might be maybe 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes, to potentially 40 plus minutes, as we know happens in the TCG itself. For a of really course. competitive type, that sounds perfectly fine, and that's kind of what they go into Yu-Gi-Oh! expecting to begin with. But for more casual people who are maybe just able to fit Most in a couple of match games, means. you know, after work or during a small break or something, that sort of time commitment looks a lot more like, you know, a Dota League of Legends, like, you know, half hour plus game that you're yep. queuing into. They probably made the right call in just keeping things best of one. It's just supposed to be like a single duel. You get in, you get out. Still, though, I would like these features to come maybe just as an option. Again, like you have somewhere else, like in a duel room. So that way when people are doing like, you know, community run tournaments, they would at least have the way of doing it without having to that like, would be nice. force it themselves. Now, the next thing is around um, some of the quality of life features. For instance, one of the things I really like is when an effect is activated, it actually shows up in the top right corner of the screen, the text of like, you know, the monster effect that they decided to use. As we know, mm. Yu-Gi-Oh's got a lot of stuff to keep up with and effects. Yeah, really a lot of blows. This is a really good convenience feature. They also have added that feature where there's like a green check mark beside effects that have been used. I find this is really useful when you're facing a deck like TR Elements, for instance. But one thing they added recently that people don't seem to like so much is around infinite impermanence. As you guys know, when you activate infinite impermanence, all the spell and trap cards in the same column that it was set in are negated for the rest of the turn. So this means that you need to remember the imperm column, so to speak. For a lot of competitive players, this is kind of just a day in the office, right? If you forget the imperm yeah. column, that's your fault because it's your responsibility to remember it. In Master Duel, though, they made it where that column is now glowing, and so you'll always know what column Imperm is activated in. I think this is a good change. Yeah, changes like this are gonna be... They're not really divisive, because most people don't actually care. Most people like that change. But the people who dislike that change are the ones who are way more into the game. So they're gonna speak out against it. If the average player of a game doesn't even care about consuming content of the game or ever talking about the game online, you know, the people who are into the game deeply are gonna talk about it a lot. So it creates a, so it creates kind of a falsehood. You think that a lot of people care about it, but in reality, no. It's just a bunch of... It's a loud minority, as always. ...change because it, again, helps with the casual kind of accessibility experience, right? This means that when average Joe, who's just getting in a couple of quick casual games of Yu-Gi-Oh! after work, decides he wants to play, and then he accidentally activates something in the Imperm column, it gets negated, and now he's kind of confused, and angry, Man, and just pissed. decides to quit, that's like a lost Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Yep. I think that it's better to just let people know, okay, hey, here's a threat, just remember it and keep it in mind, than it is to be like, oh, you missed it, you should have remembered it among the 50 other things that go on in this game. Anything that makes the game a little bit easier, it's not the end of the world, and Perm yeah. still functions as a card. Okay, so the next issue is a really big one, and that's transitioning from Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel to the TCG. So I think that Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel actually exists for Konami as a way to both monetize a sort of digital form of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but also to ideally convert players into the TCG. But what seems to happen is that Master Duel is going to be the opposite. The but when they try to play the physical card game and get the cards, they run into a lot of issues. So I see yeah. three main calls. Again, I said this at the start, it's accessibility. This is why the future is gonna slowly just drift away from actual, you know, hard copies. It's still gonna exist, it's still gonna be a collectible and whatnot, but there's gonna be more and more and more emphasis with the online aspect of the game. And I have said this for a long time, I hope that these companies start making the online games different from the actual paper games. Because in online, you are not restricted in card text. A card has overpowered things and whatnot, bro, you just, you just, you just patch note it. Congratulations, this card is nerfed. If you want now, you can, you know, disenchant it for dust or whatever your, uh, whatever kind of magical uh, random currency your game is using, and it's fine. It's a completely fine system. You, you know, you know, just make another card from it if you don't like it, considering it got nerfed. It's such a simple thing, and I think Magic suffers from this probably the most. That Wizards is an incompetent company that lit uh, that literally. Magic would be such a good game if Arena was completely separate from the garbage dumpster fire that is the whole rest of the game. 
you know, <clears throat> something's over power than the arena. What happens? Well, congratulations. The meta is this one deck or a variety of this one deck for like five months or a year until the rotation happens. I hope you're f happy. And everyone's pissed. Every single player is unanimously saying, yeah, this should go. No one likes it. Everyone hates it. Ban this card. What happens? Half a year, uh, half a year passes, and then maybe a card gets banned. Keep it alive in the real world, but ban it in the, the uh, ban it in the online game at least. There's no reason for the online game to not be different from the real game. It makes no sense. It just makes one version worse than the other for no reason. Causes for this. The first is the different card pool. This is something that everybody's talked about since day one. Master Duel has most of the cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, but not all of them. And that means that the way that your deck is built on Master Duel might not be how you build it on the TCG and vice versa. Good. So because these games don't really have parity, you can't just jump between one and the other. And of course that differing band oh, means oh, that oh, maybe oh, in Master Duel. Oh, I, I mis mistook the point. Uh, his point is about, well, there's a lot more cards out in the, uh, in the wild than there are in the online version of the game. Yeah, that, that was his point. I misunderstood. You're used to running two copies of Called by the Grave, but you're not able to run, you know, two copies in the TTG right now. Yeah. And the second issue is related to the price. So in Master Duel, cards have, you know, UR, SR, Common, Rare, those different rarities, but all URs are basically created equal, and there's no real price tag to them. You can just grind Master Duel without paying a penny and build really powerful, viable, competitive decks. But once you Good. decide to hop into the paper game, you might find that the deck that you were playing in Master Duel is a lot more expensive yeah. because the physical cards have, you know, very real price tag. Maybe that's something where it's more on the TCG side to reprint staples and stuff like that so that people don't have to pay arm and leg for like Pot of Prosperity or Forbidden Droplets or Triple Tactics Thrust or something like that. I don't think that's really Master Duel's fault. The third thing is probably around game complexity, technicalities, and like game state stuff. So while I do like Master Duel's convenience features, I could see where a player who's played a lot of Master Duel and really likes that could still go to the local card shop and be overwhelmed. Because now you have to physically Makes hold sense. these cards and physically play these cards. And so it's not as easy to just click on your opponent's grave and shuffle through what's happened. Or see the duel log on the side of the screen. Or see all of the attack changes that mm -hmm. monsters have had. Master Duel keeps up with all of that for you and that's really convenient. It's got those green check marks we were talking about. It shows what effects are being activated. It glows the imperm column. All of that stuff is not available for you, of course, in the TCG, which means that, yeah, you will be a little bit overwhelmed. I get this point, and this point is brought a lot in pretty much almost every game, but I think this point is absolutely just not applicable. Like, people, uh, for example, there, there are literal idiots who are saying, Magic the Gathering is as good as game ever to imagine as instant sorceries. No one cares. You, you understand how little all of these mechanics matter in the r real world? Almost none of them matter, you know? Learning the basic rules of the game is pretty simple, and then it's just practice so you can so you intuitively see opportunities, and that's it. The, the, none of these games are hard. None of the entries to these games is ever higher than just reading like 5,000 plus card text to understand what's happening in the first place. That is the only barrier to entry for these games. Reading because the bloat is huge over time, okay? So yeah, the, I, I don't think learning things is hard, you know? Remembering something of what happens in the column also is, you know, it's nice that the game shows it, but Honestly, you know, if you're gonna play that game and you're gonna try and play it a little, a little bit above two games a week, then you probably are gonna remember these things. It's not really gonna be a problem. So in addition to it being expensive, in addition to the format being different, the game itself, even though the rules are more or less the same, just feels more complex. I don't really know if there's a solution there because, like I said before, practice, Master Duel is practice, a digital simulator, practice, so practice. it's not going to ever really be able to perfectly capture the nuances of playing the game physically, and in Master Duel, the engine itself will not allow you to make certain types of misplays that are like illegal or you know misrepresent the game state, but that can happen easily in the TCG. As far as that's concerned, see my last video. Konami's just got to make better onboarding products. I think that they've got to maybe find ways to make the game encourage more camaraderie and teaching. There's also some dissatisfaction around Master Duel and its game modes, because in ranked mode, what often happens is 
the golden games pretty much exist in the gold tier. Once you get to platinum and especially diamond and definitely master it's just rank, meta. you're going to be facing a lot of meta decks. And nobody yep. wants to play a lot of meta decks. It's really annoying when that's kind of what you're just queuing up against over and over and over and over. Some competitive players, that's what they expect and that's what they enjoy. But like generally speaking, I think for casual people, it almost feels... This is why I pretty much never actually try to go for mythic. Because I ha if you if you're my viewer for a long time, you, you know that I have said this a lot. Uh, making videos in Mythic just sucks. You're constantly playing the same thing. You literally cannot make anything outside of the meta because the moment you are in Mythic, most of the time, almost in any percent or you know the top one thousand, you are playing against people who are trying to win really, 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 really hard, which means that more you know, more less competitive options are not good. They they just suck. It feels like a curse to get past gold rank because that's where the fun games with the creative, interesting decks end. So Konami added a casual mode to Master Duel, but I feel like it's a bit unfulfilling. You don't want to add too many incentives or rewards for playing casual mode because then all the meta players will just come in and bring TR elements to casual and ruin it for everybody else. But I do think it'd be nice if maybe you could get your daily missions done through casual mode. Right now, it actually feels like there's not any reason to play it because there are absolutely zero rewards for playing. Then there's Master Duel's events. My thing with festivals is I feel like they should be playable even after they end. About the rewards, though, uh, man, Master Duel seems like it does a bad job at the rewards. Uh, Magic the Gathering does a horrible job at the rewards. But you, again, I will say this a lot. Marvel Snap is literally the best reward system I have ever seen in a card game. It literally just keeps you engaged throughout the day. Uh, you can't just log in into Marvel Snap and just farm all your shit instantaneously. No, 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 no. It's literally spread seven hours. You get two new uh, missions and all of that stuff. Log in. It, it, keeps, it keeps you hooked so, so good, especially for new players. At one point, it does become a little bit hard and arduous, like when your collection is like 60-ish percent complete. Then it becomes a slightly hard and arduous. But after you get to like... 70 or 80 percent of the collection complete you understand that the collection is bs and you don't even need to complete it and you can still have a great time like every every card game should just literally steal what marvel snap is doing it it just it just trickles you so perfectly with those dopamine reward hits and you know accomplishments so well no other game does it even remotely close in the card gaming world so even if you can't necessarily get all the rewards for playing them, I think that you should be able to queue into, say, the Fusion Festival at any time that you want. So even if it's not live, you can still play it and just play that format because it's effectively giving alternative formats, which is always something that people really want in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because playing against the meta, as we know, gets boring. There's also some sort of pipe dream modes people want, like a draft mode or maybe even like a tag duel mode. Don't. I would love to see this sort of stuff, but I can definitely see where it's probably not super high on the development totem pole for them. Okay, so I just started working on the video and I realized I didn't actually talk about Max C. So let's talk about the road real quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very controversial card. I know a lot of people, you know, like it or dislike it or want it banned or whatever. Some people say that it is, you know, an auto win card against combo decks. When they use Max C, there's nothing I can do. I can either. But that's not true. We have C. Uh, uh, again, I have actually, I have watched a couple of videos about this Max C thing, and Max C doesn't actually auto win against these co uh, combo decks. You can, you can see it in tournament. Uh, you can see it in Yu-Gi-Oh tournament statistics very clearly. The decks that Maxi was supposed to beat and destroy and stop and curve stomp them are not actually getting curve stomped. <laughs> Some of those decks actually use Maxi themselves. <laughs> stop and then lose the next turn, or I keep playing and they draw a million cards, they beat me anyway, it's hopeless, right? So I have the unpopular opinion that I think Maxi is actually fine in Master Duel. Now, let me explain before you get your pitchforks out and run to the comments. I'm not Ooh. saying that Maxi is a perfectly designed Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm not saying that it fixes all the problems in this game. And I'm certainly not Team Maxi, as I've heard it be called online. I just Someone commented on uh, the last video I did about Yu-Gi-Oh, and I fully, full-heartedly agree with this comment. Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest problem, because I also have said this, 
If Yu-Gi-Oh fixes this problem, it is going to be literally the god of card games, right? The, the Magic has a problem it can fix and it becomes the god of card games. Yu-Gi-Oh has a problem it can fix and becomes the uh, god of card games. You know, there are options, trust me, there are options. And Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest problem is the fact that there are uh, one turn just win combos. That the, that the game doesn't last longer than, you know, your average two or three turns or whatever. If it's... If Yu-Gi-Oh! is able to slow down the game to, like, ten turns, it's gonna be amazing. It's It will be the most fun game ever, and I'm switching to Yu-Gi-Oh! I can, I can just tell you that. But as long as it's like, okay, uh, the game gets decided on, like, turn two... Or if it doesn't get decided on turn two, it's who top decks the best thing first, which probably happens on turn three. Yeah, not appealing, honestly, for me. But if the game gets, like, longer to ten turns, I'm searching to Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I do have reasons why I think that it kind of works in this game. The first thing is, Master Duel is a best-of-one format. This means when you lose the coin flip and have to go second, it can feel kind of hopeless. Max C gives players a fighting chance in that regard. If your opponent's going to combo off, you can use Max C to perhaps stave that off or at least get the resources you need to fight back next turn. Now, I'm well aware that this can still be extremely polarizing, right? It means that if you're playing a combo deck and they drop Max C, you're at a bit of an impasse. But that, to me, is where the counterplay comes in. And there are two kinds of counterplay to Max C. The first thing is there are lots of actual cards you can run as outs to it. There's Ash Blossom, there's Called by the Grave, there's Crossout Designator, and if you want to get really extreme... Isn't Ash Blossom just OP garbage that literally every deck plays without exception almost? ...with it, there's Cyframe Gamma or Drone Lockbird that can also deal with Max C. Now, I know what people are going to say, that, well, this dilutes my deck, Paul. I don't want to run all of these cards because that means that's less room for my strategy. Yeah. Yeah, this is the... Uh, yeah, th if I had to name a second problem, it's this. Admittedly, it completely is a derivative from the first problem, uh, but yeah, you can technically count at everything in Yu-Gi-Oh! to a certain extent, but you have literally no choice but putting these cards in if you want to have a shot, just a random shot at, uh, at winning against this. This is essentially in uh, Magic the Gathering the equivalent of playing against Mono Red Aggro that starts first. Or, you know, when Historic, the big problem, TG, is if you go first, you have, like, an 80% win chance guaranteed because it's just literally a coin flip. Because if your deck is not optimized to win a turn four, well, <laughs> you're not being competitive. Yeah, I guess that's true, but here's the thing. If you know that Max C is effective against your deck and usually shuts you down and can result in you losing games, then maybe that means it's a good sign to run the cards that beat it. It sucks. But the alternative is losing, so a duelist, I'm yeah. not opinion, should be adapting to it, right? And then you'll maybe say, well, that just means it's a draw the out thing. Right, but like I said, the amount of outs to max C outnumber max C. And then my second thing to that would be, well, sometimes you just don't draw the cards you need. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a game of chance. At the end of the day, sometimes you'll have strong cards and your opponent won't have answers to them. Sometimes your opponent will draw the card they need to beat you and you won't have the answer to it. It's okay. Right? If you did your best... Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of chance. Magic the Gathering is a completely bullshit rigged game that RNG literally doesn't work. Like, <laughs> and if you don't know what Magic the Gathering arena is, well then, uh, let me explain how rigged the game is. One month, you, if you play a single deck for one month, you're gonna notice that your, all of your starting hands look vaguely similar. You're playing against only a certain type of decks. In Magic the Gathering, there is this real problem that people actually think that the meta consists of, like, five builds just because what they play. But the reality is they only see those five things because the matchmaking system only allows them to be matched against these five things. The moment they radically switch up what they're playing, suddenly, oh, wow, suddenly people are playing other things? And now maybe because of the day that they are playing, they are now versing against three things, not five. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. And the RNG is, if you play a deck for a month, you will see a pattern form. A, ve a, a very, very not RNG pattern forming on how you draw things and what's happening. And the second month, 
maybe v Visitor switches up something in their RNG department, and you're no longer drawing anything what you were previously drawing. Previously, your starting hand always consisted of, like, one card. You always got it. The next month, you never get that card no longer. It's like, it's like literally not there anymore, it almost feels like. Uh, I did some statistic, uh, statistics recording while playing Historic, and from almost a hundred, at the end it was almost a hundred games that I played against, this is called Orzov Enchantments, and the best card there is uh, or the Spirit Dancer. It's completely busted in OP. From a hundred games... Spirit Dancer was in my opening opponent's hand and dropped on turn 2 90% of the time. Which is impossible RNG, by the way. And I'm very certain that the rest of the 10, uh, 10 games where it didn't happen on turn 2, which I did not record past that, but half of those games it then got dropped at turn 3, which my, my, my theory is they had it on turn 2, but they didn't drop it on turn 2 because they had no protection. For the Spirit Dancer. Because sometimes dropping it without protection is stupid. So they dropped it on turn 3. Because they had protection in a way to actually, you know, get value out of it. So yeah, that's that's how bad the MTG Arena RNG is. To adapt to Max Z and prepare for it and you still lost. Well, just chalk it up to bad luck. Sometimes it happens, right? Plus you also have the ability to just play around Max Z, right? You can choose to stop. You can choose to go. You can also choose to just make one or two more special summons. For me, for instance, I play the Dogmatica Ritual deck. Maxi can be a real thorn in my side, but sometimes when they use it, I'll just stop at one Ritual Summon, set Dogmatica Punishment, have Flirt Lee in my hand, and that's usually enough interruptions to get me through the next turn. And my opponent maybe only drew like one card in the process. And I think that sometimes it's important to remember that that's just a decision you're going to have to make. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. Can your deck stop playing and still have enough interactions? If it can't, maybe you should work on adding some more of those sorts of things into your deck. Can you run imperms that you can just set? Can your deck use something like Dragon Maid Tidying, right? If you're playing a dragon deck, that can be a way to deal with it. Or Sword Soul Blackout for Sword Souls. Or Sprite Smashers, right? I think it's important not to get so emotional and let the activation of Max C completely dictate the win or loss right there. If there's a way to play around it, you should try. And my last little bit on this is, I know that Maxi is annoying for really competitive types, but honestly, for most casual people, when you hear the complaints that they have about modern Yu-Gi-Oh, it's usually around the really, really, really obnoxiously long combos and multi-game <laughs> boards. I'm not saying they're right or they're wrong, just something to keep in mind. One last quick problem I have with Master Duel 2 is the, the way shirt's the, back. Nice. the Duelist Cup sort of invitational events work, the two-stage thing. I find that grinding is not very fulfilling, and I wish... By the way, for how many years does, does he have the shirt? They can maybe do something where there's... I, like... I, I think I remember, like, see, uh, seeing a video, and this sh two years ago or something like that, as fought, and it was the same shirt. Pools, and then a bracket that you get seated into. I guess it just feels kind of unfulfilling to know that a person spent 72 hours grinding, but they didn't necessarily actually, like, win over a field of people, they just had more time. Anyway, that's all my thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, and the last part, this is the fa my favorite Magic the Gathering Arena part. This is especially true for the historic format. The game is so rigged that you play against 100 card decks that have perfect hands so often. And you, s and you see these people playing 100 card decks, which is completely uncompetitive in RNG destroying. Or it should be, but not in Arena. And they're, they're at the high end of the bracket. They're literally at Mythic. There are people who play 100 decks in Mythic and actually do well because the game is just so goddamn rigged. Master Duel right now. I want to know what you guys think. There's a lot of complaints going on. There's a lot of defenses and arguments. Try to keep it respectful in the comments. I know I've got some opinions that might be considered controversial, but yeah. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I'll be reading. I'll be responding. Let me know. What do you think? What's That's your Master amazing. Duel doing? How can it change? How can it make the transition to the TCG easier? I'll see you guys. Well, that's pretty much it. Team APS, by the way. Don't know if I actually showed that before, but yeah. They they, they fucking do Yu-Gi-Oh! in all kinds of sorts of wacky, wild ways. Pretty good stuff. Anyway, that's it for the video. This was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.